Testing, testing. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to episode two of the 2019 uh, Ask a Dev series with your host, Jen Israel. Uh, <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. It has been a very, very, very uh, active last two weeks or last week or so for me. Um, last time I saw, I. Uh, as you guys know, I showed you my puppy. So uh, he's been with us. He's been a member of the family for about, I don't know, four or five days. Uh, not, or I guess a little over a week now. But uh, so that's been very active. Um, changed our lives in various little ways where now we have to adjust for this person and that person. But um, anyhow, uh, before we get into all that, of course, welcome back. Every weekend we take about an hour so that we can answer questions and provide some mentoring, some guidance to the best of my ability. Um, so it has been uh, one thing that I, I think not only do I enjoy, but I can help provide value and something I wish I had when I was getting going. So um, we do this every week. And uh, if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. So um, hit that notification bell as well. Ding, ding. All right. <laughs> so. Um, Um, so with that being said, as people sort of funnel in here, um, I usually like to start with a topic, um, a little bit about what's going on. As I mentioned, the dog, I, I also started Dev Mountain's Quality Assurance Coding Bootcamp. I just got done with my one-on-one -on -one with my, I guess, teacher. I was going to say mentor, but my teacher. Um, not really too much to talk about. We're just getting going. Um, I've really been enjoying it thus far. So that's been good. Um, I also, if you haven't noticed from the title, I'm going to be talking about starting a new job. Jeez, Dylan, why are you talking about this topic? Well, <laughs> um, although it's somewhat of a secret, I guess, uh, at my current work, they didn't want me to say anything. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I am, uh, I have decided to move on to other opportunities. Um, so, uh, let's talk a little bit about what that means for you and your career. Um, you know, typically as a software engineer, uh, you know, when you make a jump, especially early on in your career, you get a, uh, a little bit of a pay bump. Um, in this case, it's about even, but I, I had just got a 40% pay bump about six months ago. So, to get another five or so, um, I'm getting about a five to seven percent raise, um, but it's not about the money. But tip, I, I'm just bringing this up because I want you guys to understand that these are things that you need to evaluate. And I, I have, I'm gonna add some videos about evaluating a full contract. And so why do I say five to seven percent? Like, no, don't you know? It's like, aren't you getting a salary increase? Yes, but also you have to factor in things like benefits. Benefits cost me. Um, about $2,200 a year for health, dental, short-term, long-term. So if a potential employer were to say, hey, we're instead of paying 50% or 75%, we're going to pay 100%. And you have to say, oh, that's cool. How, how does that impact my bottom line? Oh, my God, it saves me twenty-two to $2,500 a year. And then they, you, know, you look at the 401k, how much free money am I getting? All those sorts of things. So it's not always about the salary. I'm in PTO or sanity sanity days is, is what i call them so um that's just a little bit about things to consider when moving on to other jobs and negotiating and what i call the 7500 dollar rule um i'll do a video all about this but um so i i have this sort of mental thing i call the 7500 dollar rule where um you always ask for $7,500 more than they give you, even if it's a great, fantastic offer, and you'll get $5,000 more. That's, that, is, that is the $7,500 rule. Um, so you have to have strategies when negotiating as well. Uh, I'm not saying that's what I did or didn't do, but I um, just things that people need to think about. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're working a job, you're most people, myself included, work a job 
not because they necessarily want to. I don't want to say that I don't want to, but because I have to, right? Because this is how I provide. If I if I was financially independent, would I have a job for somebody else? No, I probably wouldn't, right? Um, and I think that's the case for 97% of people. Anyhow, um, let's talk about what it means a little bit about being professional in in the in the way of um, res resignation because I think that's important as well it's something that pe some people handle very poorly and some people um, handle like a professional and I, I can that's what I consider myself to be as a professional so um, when it comes to resigning and I've resigned from about four different roles maybe no three really only count the one job. If you count the one job I've resigned from twice, uh, I guess I've resigned four times. Um, um, so how can we how can we handle that professionally? Well, you first off is you write a professional resignation letter that's very strict and straightforward as to when your last day will be. Um, um, and from there, you go, you go and um, in your letter, you don't point fingers, you don't make accusations, you don't say it doesn't even really matter why uh, or where you're going. Some people some people ask, and I, I have no problem telling anyone where I'm going. Um, some people are uncomfortable with that, and that's fine too. Um, you know, it's I uh, I think a lot of times, like your managers and your coworkers, ask where you're going. More, more out of curiosity. It's not like they're going to call and then shut you, shut you down or anything like that. But um, so you, any professional should give two weeks. Some people can give longer if they know it. My advice is never give longer than a month. Um, and and. When, what I mean by why is because there's been plenty of cases where you've given your two weeks at places that if presumably weren't as professional as you are, and they tell you don't even bother coming in anymore. And then you have to deal with a month of no salary, which is unfortunate. It's not something a lot of people want to deal with or can deal with. Um, so it is, it is one of those items where you need to be a professional even if you're leaving because the companies aren't professional and even if they were you want to still be a professional right because they why wouldn't you want to be so i want everyone to understand that that you need to give two weeks you can do all this sort of stuff before you move on to other opportunities so um and when you're negotiating offer negotiate it's okay to negotiate it's okay to look out for yourself it's okay to want what's best for you that's fine because chances are not chances the reality of the situation is no one else will so stick up for yourself and define yourself and uh, and make sure that you are willing to do what's right and what's best for you because at the end of the day um, no one else will and um that's that so uh anyhow I'm starting a new job i don't want to talk too much about my new job basically doing the same thing a couple different technologies at a different company and um and uh, from there, that's that. So uh, I missed some questions. Let's see what's going on. What are the media query resolutions that companies support? So typically, what it it first off, um, this is one of those questions that there's not a distinct answer for everybody. But I would say if a company is intelligent about how they what that should be, there should be some Google Analytics to who is our customer base. It's like, oh look, 95% of people of our customers use iPhones. What are the iPhone pixel dimensions? And so what you do is you then take those media queries and you say, okay, we here's our tablet one, here's our watch one, here is our mobile one, and here's our desktop one. And you may not even have those four, but that's you should take those into consideration as you're 
building it out. I'm sure there's some sort of generic ones. I um I looked it up one time. There's some recommended ones, but really at the end of the day, you should look at your customer base and go for, off that. Uh, suggestions about the fundamentals of JavaScript? You just got to practice every single day. That's it. There's not there's not really anything special about it. You just got to actually put the work in and practice, practice, practice. Algorithms help. I don't want to show my website Internet Explorer version less, lesser than 10. What can I do? Well, what you can do is you can write a node server, and then you can write a, a something to catch if the header coming through tells you that um, it's Internet Explorer. And from that, you can then redirect to a real browser or to redirect to an HTML page saying your browser is not supported. Uh, if a manager interviewed me and emailed me back saying he's trying to process to get me on board quickly as possible and HR is processing the offer, did I basically get the job? It sounds like, yeah, you still have to negotiate your offer, but yeah. ROI, how much wealth do you think you've created for your employers? I don't know. More more than more than what my salary is, I suppose, would probably be a fair statement. How much coke do you do on a daily basis? Come on, man. Your boy's drug free. I thought you were staying what happened. Not everything works out in the long term and new exciting opportunities present themselves. How much does a fresher get as a software development? It all depends, right? Um, it all depends. Um, I make a significant portion above than the what the Tampa salary would be like. So it, it all just depends, man. It, it's, it all comes down to skill level, really. A skill level and technologies. TCS? I haven't heard of TCS. Is that a consulting thing? Oh, uh, um, I don't know if you need something to, to get going, um, do what you, you know, get the, what experience is key. Experiences help you. The hardest thing you're going to have to do is not learn to code. It's going to be to get your first front end job. So keep that in mind. Um, Do you think there will be a recession this year? If so, how will it affect developers? Um, I have no idea. I haven't been following the market at all. Um, I basically just take all my money and then I throw it at my my home loan. <laughs> That's it. I'm trying to pay it down real quick. Uh, I've paid off about 14 grand in three months on my home loan. And so like, that's what I'm doing with my money right now. Um, Webpack's used in pretty much every build tool in the front end, period. So you might have confused it with like Gulp or maybe Bower. But Webpack. Yeah. Looking good. Thank you, man. This is what, what you see here. This is the, a lot of, um, puppy love going on here, as well as just happiness and looking forward to new opportunities. That's what this is right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, whew, a little bit of stress or relief. Your boy is feeling good. You know what I mean? Feeling g -g 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 good. <laughs> Uh, oh man um feeling good looking great you know what i'm saying um 
Uh, how many freelancing gigs need to be done for employers to take you seriously? I'm AW sir, certified and been applying for a year. I wonder what your resume looks like. Where's Joel on the Wix developer? It's probably out there trying to scam somebody. <laughs> Is web development growing so fast or is it declining to those freaking websites like WordPress and Wix? So WordPress and Wix for the most part is one of those things where you're going to be building, you're going to be building, not even building, you're going to be working with it. And it's mainly going to be for small e-commerce sites, things that don't need anything custom. Um, and so, Those those jobs that even require that typically pay much less. Um, I had an offer for a job that just had 30% of WordPress. They wanted 30% WordPress. And like, I didn't know when I interviewed, but I like the company. The benefits are cool. I was like, all right, cool. I'll consider it, you know, and I'll, I'll just go and do my JavaScript stuff. And I was like, and then they made me an offer. It was $30,000 less. $30,000 less. Because by the WordPress being part of my job, it lowered my value. It literally lowered my value for that skill because that skill pays much less. Um, Uh, but no, um, what I'm trying to say is that those sites, they don't really impact you because for the most part, you need to understand that you're not going to be working. You're not, you, your job, you don't want to be the guy who's building the restaurant website or the gas station website uh, or the small business website. There's nothing wrong with that, but then you're going client to client to client to client. Very stressful life. Um, what you want to do, this is a matter of opinion, without a doubt, what you want to do is you want to instead work for a corporate entity that can pay you six figures, full benefits, and you're going to have a job, no problem, no, no questions asked, and you're going to get paid very well. And to do that, you have to have skill. You have to have, you have to be able to build custom things because that's what good developers do. They build custom things. So, um, yeah, don't worry about WordPress and Wave. Yeah, if you're really that worried about resolutions, I do a quick Google search, and if you don't find anything, uh, look at your own Google Analytics and see what they say. Hey, Dylan, any advice dealing with self-doubt, depression while job pumping? Don't have much experience, eight to nine months, and always doubting my abilities. So this is um, classic imposter syndrome. We all suffer from it. I should say all. The majority of people, myself included in the past. Um, there's a couple ways you can get over it. I'll, uh, I'll tell you how it worked for me. So before I was a dev, I was working at a software company as a technical writer and sort of business analyst um, type role. And by the way, this is... Three and a half years ago when I started that job, two and a half years ago when I ended that job. So relatively recent. All right. And um, 
at the time they would they were interviewing candidates i told them hey i you know my goal is to become a dev this and that and i you know just straight up from the the, the get-go so i've been studying 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 and so i would see candidates come in and they would ask them to like reverse a string on a whiteboard and they couldn't do it and i was like I can do that. Like, <laughs> like, why aren't I interviewing for this role? I can do it. I kill it, right? Um, so that gave me a little bit of confidence. Um, uh, but more than anything else, uh, the thing that killed it once I had a job was um, just the... I've had two software jobs, soon to be three. I've had close to 15 offers ever made. Um, so um, it's one of those things where I just, I, I, I just rationale that I can't be tricking that many people. <laughs> and like, I've done enough interviews to know where my skill level is at. I don't need to doubt myself. Um, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of experience and sometimes it takes a little bit of um just a little bit of time but um if multiple companies are willing to offer me you know six figure salaries then i must be doing something right is what i how i eliminated it um that's just the truth of the matter is i put the time the effort the energy in i'm you know it, it, it's one of those things is like how could i doubt myself with how much time i put in like Look at that. I got a whiteboard right there of just me working on things. Uh, uh, over my shoulder over there, there's a free code camp certificate that's framed from 500 hours of coursework I did. I have a software channel. I'm writing a book. I'm doing a course. I'm doing an online quality assurance boot camp right now. Um, you know. It's, it's just one of those things where... You present yourself with so much stuff that you're like, oh, okay, maybe I don't need to doubt myself. It's just a going in the right direction. Um, uh, have you seen ageism in hiring? I'm older than the average dev of my experience level, so am I. Um, <laughs> not by much, I guess. Not, uh, but, but so am I. Um, I mean, I have two and a half years. I'm 31. Most people started straight out of college, so I'm probably they probably have most most of the developers I work with are about three years younger than me on average, and they have about four to five years of experience on me. Um, but with that being said, it's ageism a thing? Yes. Is it something that you should worry about? No. Why shouldn't you worry about it? Well. Because it's not going to do anything for you. You just have to overcome it. You have to put that energy, instead of worrying about it, into solving it and getting better. And making that no matter how old you are, if you're that good, they're going to hire you. That's the only thing. Now that you have experience on your resume, how long does it take you to get an offer when applying for new jobs? Uh, I mean, that, that varies. Um, I could tell you that I started applying a month ago recently, um, and I got four offers within a month. Um, so it just sort of depends. You know, people probably had new budgets coming out and they're excited about it. And I've had to cancel about seven interviews um, within the last week. Which, by the way, on a side note, some recruiters are very nice about it. Some are so incredibly salty. It, the lack of professionalism in the recruiting space for about half of these recruiters is out of this world. Just sad it really is it's just one of those things where where why would i ever work with you again truly why would you and by the way um on a side note 
the gentleman, the recruiter who um, who ended up introducing me to the company that I'm going with, I've worked with him in the past, and I declined an offer for a role, and we basically s- s- settled things on good terms. He's like, all right, you know, I understand. Do what's best for you. And I was like, all right, thank you, man. I appreciate the effort. Bam. Follow up later in the future. Here we are again. Professionals working together. He's gonna go get his commission and whatnot and be happy. But like, I don't know if I don't know what the deal is. But some people are so salty, so salty. Um, the lack of professionalism of some people is a little bit. It's it's unnerving. It really is. It's a little it's a little disheartening. Um, how do you just sit down and work on coding? In the last four hours, I've gone on three ten minute lectures done. Well, I would say that you probably don't aren't watching very good lectures. I would also say that you probably just want to be doing something else, not necessarily coding, but like maybe you just want to code. Go build something. If you can't sit there and listen to a lecture, um, go solve an algorithm. Go do this. Go do that. Um, yeah, um, so, uh, sorry, I got a little distracted. I'm texting a coworker of mine. We're going to be going out to, to dinner tonight. Um, uh, but yeah, so I would say if you're having trouble focusing, first off, take a little bit more caffeine. Secondly, by the way, I'm not a doctor and I can't recommend you to take a little bit more caffeine. It's a little bit of a joke. Um, but um, try and try, man. Figure out, try and remember why you're doing what you're doing and go find the fun. The thing that has helped me be successful is always chasing the fun aspects of coding. That's it. Um, I get paid to do the unfun stuff, but in terms of improving, I chase the fun stuff. Chase the fun. Um, I look like a cybersecurity guy. I know nothing about cybersecurity, Jon Snow. All right. (laughs) Besides, employers make at least twice what they pay us. Who cares how much the employers make? They're the employer. You're the employee. The average CEO makes something like 500 times what one of their employee makes. That's what you get for starting a business. That's what you, like, really, don't, it's of no concern of yours how much your employer makes. None at all. You're like, well, Dylan, how, what about what they should be? You should just know your value based off the market, not how much the business is making. I'm hoping being older would gives me an advantage when it comes to the soft skills. I agree. Look, man, the I've worked with older developers. My um, my previous work, the g- gentleman was about 34, 35, and it was his first software dev job. He spent the first like 15 years of his adult life in the military. Went out, got out of school, and then uh, went and got a bachelor's in computer science, and then started working. So. My point being is that him as a slightly older gentleman, which it's not really that old. He's like 35, 36. But these are things people are worried about, uh, even at this age. So that's why I'm using this example. He understands the value of a good company. He understands work ethic. He's not going to be going out every night and getting torn up. You know, those stereotypes of – there's stereotypes for every demographic, every age group, right? Um, I just made one. I just I just said about going out every night game time. We're talking about young kids who are partying and drinking and you know doing the tinders <laughs> on a Wednesday night. You're doing the tinders. <laughs> uh, my point being is that 
you know, there's going to be, um, there's going to be, um, ageism at any age. So, anyhow. I started a new role as front end developer. Any advice or tips? Yes. Uh, first tip. If you haven't already, I would recommend reading a couple of the books I have recommended. Uh, uh, so uh, in the description below, you'll see links for Clean Code and the Clean Coder. You can help me out by getting those. I encourage you to read both those immediately so that you can learn uh, about the solid principles. Um, second thing, go and master the solid principles. Um, your chances are you're doing object-oriented programming, and that's going to help you quite a bit. You could be doing functional, but um, uh, solid principles all the same should be looked into and mastered. Third thing. The first three months of your job, the time outside of work is no longer your time. It is your time to get proficient in all the things that you're not proficient in. So that's my advice. My girlfriend messed up on this coffee today. It's not very good. She also, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone who knows anything about Uncrustables, I don't get to eat these very often, but on occasion, I put them in here. So you freeze them, and then you take them out of the freezer, and you put them in the fridge to defrost. So yesterday, I took out one from the freezer, and I put it in the fridge to defrost. Okay. I went to go grab it, the one that I planned ahead of time, that I took out of the freezer the night before, put in the fridge defrost so I could have it today. I went to go grab it, and you know what? It wasn't there. April stole my Uncrustable and, and didn't even replace it with another one from the freezer. So as if you noticed earlier, it looked like I was biting a stale bread. It wasn't stale. It was frozen. I'm going to have a talk with her about this because I was very upset. <laughs> very upset that I had planned for a flawless Uncrustable. Didn't happen. So, um, you know, the point being to everyone with their significant others, if you're going to eat the last thought Uncrustable, as a courtesy, you replace it with a frozen, one of the frozen Uncrustables. Just saying. Um so clearly I'm going to evict her. Uh, so <laughs> I'm changing the locks on the house as we speak. Um, she's no longer welcome in our home. Um, uh, what are my thoughts about getting the CompTIA certification, A++ and Network++? Um, my thoughts are pretty basic. They are, if you are interested in DevOps, if you are interested in network services. So that's basically it. If you're interested in doing front end full stack uh, development, what if, whatever it may be, uh, I think your time is better spent on other things. Uh, will it help? Sure. Um, will it help uh, so much? Probably not. Um, also, uh, I mean, there are those sort of pseudo dev roles at smaller companies where you're just the IT guy that does everything, and it will help you get those jobs. Um, but um, I would say for the most part, I would look into something else. How much time does it take for someone who studies two hours a day to be a full stack web dev? Uh, two hours a day every day for a year? That sounds about right. Yeah, so like if I was going to recommend some certifications for you, if you're looking into full stack, uh, I'd recommend the one that I'm working on. And I, in all honesty, I, I, I kind of stopped working on it because I, I got a little too much going on, but I will finish it by the end of 2019, um, is an Agile or Scrum certification. 
I highly recommend that. I think that's something that will increase your value exponentially. Um, you could go to something like scrum.org or scrumalliance.org, I want to say it is, and check it out and go get the dev one. So I highly recommend doing something like that. Um, that would be the first certification I would get. Um, the Scrum Agile thing, it would look fantastic on a resume. Look, companies struggle with Agile. Um, companies struggle with requirements. Companies struggle with everything that's there. So they want developers who understand the process that can support it because the IT department wants to have it happen. And they want to support this methodology because it's been proven to be a great tool. Um, so. At the very least, you will know what situation you're going into, and you'll be educated, and you can speak to it and provide value. So I highly encourage you to do that. How long we've been going so far? Oh, we still got another 25 minutes. You guys running out of questions or what? This ain't for me. Although I do enjoy it. I'm here. I'm here for you, baby. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should put two Uncrustables? Look. Look. I'm not saying that she can't take the Uncrustable, but she should have replaced it. Hey, baby. Did you eat my Uncrustable? Yep. Your Uncrustable. My Uncrustable. I planned for it not to be in there. I wasn't 100% sure because I, really, I didn't look that hard, but you should have replaced it. I planned ahead to have that Uncrustable today. You know what I did? After I did that, I put two in the in the fridge. Like a civilized person. So you could have an Uncrustable, and I could have an Uncrustable. Let's talk about this, John. Let's no. talk about it. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, no. Fucking list. No, no, no. All right. I love you, baby. <laughs> Oh, uh, dodge bullet there, guys. We dodge, <laughs> we dodge a bullet, as the French like to say, a bullet. All right. Um, do you guys hear about Uber trying to bring flying taxis to use by 2023? Good, good luck. Uh, what do you think about jumping back front end, back end with starting? I think it's fine although i'd recommend staying in front end just in getting going and building something so is storing the jwt token a bad idea no i don't think so uh do recruiters ask some algorithms data structures through the web devs it all depends on the organization um um so like uh, most of the time, no. Here, here's the thing: is most of the time you won't be asked about specific data structures and algorithms. You might be asked to write some code. You might be asked to solve solve some algorithms in the sense of like, here's a problem, you know, do a fizzbuzz type problem. But certain organizations, really, only four I've sort of really interviewed with, which is Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Amazon. They want you to know algorithms and data structures. Pretty much everywhere else that I've ever interviewed, they don't give a shit about. Because uh, in the front end, I'm just talking about in the front end for web dev, because 
you don't really a binary search tree is not gonna do anything for you. You know, breath first search not gonna matter. Binary search is gonna matter. It's none of that. None of that matters. What matters is your fundamental understanding of mobile um, or of um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's really it at the end of the day. So, um, I mean. Yeah, but I, I mean, if you want a job at one of the sort of the, the big four type of companies and larger organizations, then yeah. Uh, do I think I'll do a Firebase and real-time database tutorial for you in the future? Um, we'll see, man. The next 12 weeks, I'm doing the, the quality assurance coding boot camp and like, I... There's a lot going on. There's a, there's, there's a lot going on, and uh, I, I I'd like to do it all, but uh, I don't know that I will. So we'll see. I'll, I'll do my best to keep putting stuff out, but uh, as my boy Max Holloway says, it is what it is. You know, so. Happy New Year to you, too, Marco. Um, what are the pros and cons of living in Florida? Pro, cost of living is significantly cheaper. Um, my house, 260 k brand new house. No one's ever lived in it before. It's almost 3,000 square feet. It's beautiful. I have a nice backyard. I don't pay state tax. So in California... If uh, my state tax would probably evaluate to about seven point seven point five percent or seven percent around there. Um, sorry, April's requesting money for me for putting gas in my car that she used. <laughs> uh, so, um, so uh, no state tax there. The cost of living on average is significantly cheaper than most other areas. Um, it's got decent weather. I like it better than I like it better than I did California. California is just hot and dry. Um, cons. Um, some people say it's humid. I don't think it's that humid. It, or at least that, or humidity doesn't bother me. Um, another con, uh, sometimes there's a little bit more bugs. Not at our house now, cause, um, but at other people's, like my old apartment is pretty bad, but our house is great. Um, no bugs. We have, we have a, a quarterly guy that comes around and makes sure that there's no bugs, which is nice. Um, cons, there's a lot of crackheads. But that's pretty standard in pretty much any state. Uh, honestly, the only major con for me of, of Florida is that as I as I mature and as I've become much happier, no longer being in school and sort of being able to pay for a lifestyle that I want and and just being a happier, healthier person. I've grown to appreciate my family much more than when I was miserable. Um, and so um, that has probably been the biggest con uh, as an adult, which is kind of a strange thing to say because I never thought it would be true. Um, but, you know, it's, it's nice because there's the distance between us and I've been able to be very proactive, very, very proactive to get where I want. And... Um, um, but yeah, you started the hundred algorithm challenge. Excellent. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, should I apply for an internship in the U S? Um, I don't, I mean, you can, I, it might be a little hard to get a, uh, get a internship. What do I think about the new features in React 16.7? I haven't followed up on it. I, uh, I've been working in Angular for the last year and a half. I'll be working in Vue at my next role. So I, I've i played around in React, but I'm not by any, um, by any sense of the imagination a React expert. 
Do I still have my original portfolio when you get your first job? This may surprise you, but I never built one. Uh, my portfolio is my YouTube channel. Um, I did build a website. If you go to uh, coding tutorials, that was like my first real project that I built. Uh, where can I take that QA course you're talking about? This is actually a quality assurance coding boot camp through Dev Mountain. Um, it's not free. It's I think it's about seventy five hundred dollars. Any tips for becoming a successful freelancer? I would say tip number one: go and build, go and work for a company and get better, and then go be a freelancer. Uh, coding shik shiksa. Let's see here. How to get people to go to your site? Um, I don't know, man. Start a YouTube channel, start promoting it, start blogging, start getting out there. But um, all right, guys. Um, I gotta, I gotta have to go to class. I have to go work on uh, fun stuff like quality assurance and continue to learn. I also got a book sent to me by a subscriber that was written that I plan on reading uh, here. So um, I'll let you know how it is. Um, my all right, last question. Favorite IDE for um, coding is by far Visual Studio Code. I've been using it for about two years now. I absolutely love it. Uh, Visual Studio Code is the best front end IDE available, in my opinion. But um, all right, guys. Uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope and wish you all the best in your endeavors. Um, I'll see you later.